viewers uh, now the next talk uh, we have the next speaker dr m gopal krishna gokul krishna iyer ji who is uh, joining us uh, from shrirangam uh, very wonderful sacred uh, this, uh, place i would say uh, he will be speaking on the topic shrimad appaya dikshitendra as an upasaka glimpses from his shivarchana chandrika just a brief introduction uh, dr gokul krishna ji is a practicing ayurvedic physician and uh, he is a student of sanskrita sahityam with a special interest in the literary heritage of the saints of adi shankaracharya tradition i must make a special mention of the fact that uh, uh, gokul krishna ji is deeply dedicated to appaya dikshitendra he he is probably one of the one of those person who is personally invested in the dissemination of uh, uh, works of appaya dikshitendra teachings of appaya dikshitendra so and he was one of the first i i, I approached for this uh, symposium uh, when we conceived of this symposium he was the first name that came to my mind because he he has been uh, trying to uh, create awareness about appaya dikshitendra's life and his works uh, for uh, for many years now and uh, uh, we had done a uh advaita acharya life and works of advaita acharya session with him on the life of appaya dikshitendra as well on uh, in indika moksha so with this brief uh, uh, comments i request uh, uh, Gok gokul krishna ji to start his session yasyahu ragam vid paripurna shakte hai amshe kiyatyapi nivishtam amuh prapancham tasmai tamala ruchi bhasura kandharaya नारायणी सहचराय नम शिवाय श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक विधाय वेदा विविधा कलाश्च भावज्ञम प्राप्य विशीद शंभो प्रिय कर्तुमतीर्ण श्रीमाजयत्यपय दीक्षितेन्द्र उमाकांते रमाकांते येषासी मति नमामि दीक्षितेन्द्रांस्तान नयषट्क विशारदान श्रीशिव ज्ञान सन्मार्ग संप्रदाय प्रवर्तकान श्रीमदअप्पय्य योगींद्र देशिकेन्द्रान भजाम है मै हम्बल ओबीस तो अद्वैत विद्याचार्य श्री आदिशंकर भगवत पाद मै हम्बल ओबीस तो अद्वैत विद्याचार्य श्रीमदअप्पय्य दीक्षितेन्द्र आई थैंक दि ऑर्गनाइजर्स of indica moksha for organizing this series of talks on selected portions of the from the works of shrimad appaya dikshitendra so by organizing symposiums like this so we have been giving the the attention to shrimad appaya dikshitendra the attention which he deserves so this is a great service you have been doing to sanatana dharma to sanskrit literature and to advaita vedanta so the topic i have chosen for uh, today's topic is an appreciation of shrimad appaya dikshitendra as an upasaka and here i will be giving some glimpses from uh, the work of shrimad appaya dikshitendra known as shivarchana chandrika so because this uh, work known as shivarachana chandrika although it is a laghukaya granth the topics uh, that have been discussed here are extremely deep and it is only possible to give a bird's eye view of the topic so in passaras uh, shivarchana chandrika is concerned so here dikshitendra gives us an outstanding exposition so it is an outstanding exposition of the most characteristic of a vaidik shiva bhakta and the most important uh, characteristic of a vaidik shiva bhakta is shiva puja vidhana and this work shivarchana chandrika is organized by dikshitendra into 38 chapter so the before the so in the introduction so before the first the upachara so he gives an introduction to the text so in the introduction he gives the what or what is going to be dealt with in the whole text of shivarchana chandrika at, at the end of the 38 uh, uh, upachara then he gives the conclusion of the text 
so the whole of this text so so it is an applicatory exposition of the shruti vakyams the smriti vakyams and purana vakyams on the external worship of shiva so we know that he has composed stotras like durga chandra kala stuti and stotras like aditya stotra nam brahma tarka stavah shikarini mala every single word of shrimad of shrimad apaye dikshitendra that has been used in these stotrams so it has uh, a very large body of shruti vakyams or smriti vakyams or itihasa purana vakyams behind it so dikshitendra would have kept in mind a group of uh, shruti vakyams smriti vakyams and itihasa purana vakyams while comp while uh, compiling one single uh, word of his and in his science, his own sanskrit commentary on it he would have given a very detailed uh, elaboration of it by quoting uh, enormously from the various uh, shastric literatures so when a careful study of this uh, shivarjana chandrika will also reveal that dikshitendra gives us the essence of the shrutis smritis and puranas so in this way so the famous shloka on adi shankara bhagavat pada shruti smriti purana naam alayam karunalayam namami bhagavat padam shankaram loka shankaram so we can paraphrase this uh, mangal mangala charana shloka on uh, adi shankara acharya with reference to dikshitendra shruti smriti purana naam alayam karunalayam namami dikshitendra tam appayam loka shankaram so that is the greatness of shrimad appaye dikshitendra so the enter uh, text is composed of instructions pertaining to personal sadacharam various aspects of puja and then the external insignia of shiva bhakta the ch chanting of the sacred panchakshara mantra homas darshan of the lord's deity in a temple and finally eating prasada so he starts with uh, danta dhavana vidhi and then snana vidhi the third one is uh, sankshepa shaiva sandhya vidhanam apart from the vaidika sandhya he, he gives a short uh, introduction to shaiva sandhya vidhanam and then bhasma dharana vidhanam rudraksha dharana vidhanam so in this way it goes on so a careful study of the entire work reveals that it is a legacy of a lifetime that had been devoted to a patient and meticulous shiva puja and a production of an exalted personality in whom we could find a very great mixture of an erudite scholar and immense piety so it's a mixture of these two things we can see in uh, the work shivarchana chandrika and as a scholar who was endowed with an extraordinary knowledge in all the scriptures so he was a sarvatantra swatantra he has given us vaidika mantras smrityukta shloka mantras and puranokta shloka mantras to be chanted at appropriate times in different sections of shivarchana chandrika so in all his works all the 104 works of the, uh, his dikshitendra stands out in all the charm of his rich and varied personality from the different facets of his personality 104 works in sanskrit of multiple genus have emerged as a mimamsaka mudhanya as an erudite scholar in four great schools of vedanta as an erudite uh, scholar in alankara shastra as a vyakarana sarvabhouma as an erudite scholar of the entire range of itihasa purana as a devotee who was well aware of the local sthala puranams of different temples and as an exemplary devotee who had surrendered himself completely to his chosen deity dikshitendra has produced many works that are uh, literary gold each one of his work is a literary gold so we can say that each one of his work is a magnum of his you know individually so when we take a look at his uh, advaita vedanta granth as like parikalpata ruparimala vyakhyanam nyaya rakshamani shastra siddhanta lesha sangraha upakrama parakrama nayamanjari so we can say that each one of it is a magnum opus in the same way his works in shivadvaita vedanta like shivarka mani deetika shivadvaita nirnaya and then uh, his uh, vishishta advaitic works like uh, nayamayukha malika and commentary on yadava bheda mahakavyam of swami vedanta deshikar so we can say that each one is a magnum opus 
that was the eminence of Dikshitendra. So, in his Shiva, this Shivarchana Chandrika stems from that facet of Srimad Apaya B. Dikshitendra as a rigorous Upasaka. So, apart from being a scholar, Dikshitendra was extremely committed to Upasana. So, his being a multi faceted personality was not just limited to the different schools of Vedanta. So, there alone it doesn't exist. So, his being a multi faceted personality extends to the Mantra Shastra as well. So, apart from being a rigorous Shaivopasaka, Dikshitendra also had initiation into Vaishnava mantras and Shakta mantras as well. So, he has written a work known as Krishna Dhyana Padhati and his own uh, auto commentary on Krishna Dhyana Padhati. And th in this work, he throws light on the esoteric meanings of many secret mantras on Lord Krishna. And then he also explains the results of chanting them and the methods of meditation. Apart from this, he had also written a work known as Shri Vidya Tattva Vivarana. Here he gives a detailed description of the true nature of Shri Vidya worship. So the, these three works, Krishna Dhyana Padhati and uh, Dikshit and Rao's own auto commentary is not available today. And it is believed that these two works are preserved in some library, so they are preserved in Oxford University. And uh, his work, Shri Vidya Tattva Vivaranam, so until the 1930s, we know that it was there in a uh, university in Lahore. And after that, we do not know the fate of this manuscript. We do not know if it was a hitherto unpublished manuscript or a published work. So we do not have information about it. So in the Vikshitendra Vijayam written by K.V. Subramanya Shastrigal, so he has, uh, he has also given a list of 104 works uh, written by Vikshitendra. So there in the so in this list of 104 works, he gives uh, he lists uh, Shiva Krishna Dhyana Padhati and his own auto commentary on it. So he also gives the uh, he also mentions the name of Sri Vidya Tattva Vivarana. And unfortunately, these works are not available today. So, so that was the eminence of Dikshitendra. So Pradhanataya his Upasanam was on Lord Shiva. Gaunataya, his Upasanam was on Krishna and Devi. So he also, he was a very great devotee of uh, Lord Vishnu. So he has written a wonderful stotram uh, on Varadaraja Perumal of Kanchipuri. He has also written a stotram on Devi, Durga the famous Durga Chandra Kalastuti. So before we go into uh, Shivarjana Chandrika, so I would like to give a description of uh, an Uttama Shiva Bhatta. So in Shiva Mahapuranam, so Shiva Mahapuranam is one of the 18 Mahapuranam and it was uh, Shri Vyasacharya who has blessed us with this Puranam as well, just like how Vyasacharya has blessed us with Srimad Bhagavatam, which is a wonderful Puranam. He has also blessed us with Shiva Mahapuranam. So Shiva Mahapuranam has seven uh, Samhitas. So the first one is Vidyeshvara Samhita, the second one is Rudra Samhita, third one is Chaturudra Samhita, fourth one is Koti Rudra Samhita, fifth one is Uma Samhita, sixth one is Kailasa Samhita, and the seventh and last one is Vayaviya Samhita. So in these seven, uh, among, uh, seven Samhitas, the first one is Vidyeshvara Samhita. So there in Vidyeshvara Samhita, so in the, cha the 17th chapter, so it is about the greatness of uh, Pranava Mantra and Panchakshara Mantra. So towards the end of this chapter, so the Lakshanas of uh, the topmost Shiva Bhatta have been described. So this is how the shloka goes on. Kriya Yukta Dashabhyascha Tapo Yukto Vishishyate Tapo Yukta Dashabhyascha Japa Yukto Vishishyate Japa Yukta Sahasre Bhyaha Shiva Gnani Vishishyate Shiva Gnani Shu Lakshashu Jhana yukto vishishyate, jhana yukte shukoti bhya, samadhi stho vishishyate. So kriya yukta, a devotee who is, who uh, has the quality of uh, kriya. Sorry to interrupt, can you make it full screen? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, able to see it? Yes, yes, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, 
So there are six lakshanas. Kriya yuktatvam is lakshanam one. Tapo yuktatvam is lakshanam two. Japa yuktatvam is lakshanam three. Shiva jnana yuktatvam is lakshanam four. And then dhyana yuktatvam is lakshanam five. And samadhi yuktatvam is lakshanam six. So uh, a devotee who is endowed with kriya is kriya yukta. A devotee who is endowed with tapas is tapo yukta. So I will explain what is each of these uh, in detail. So one tapo yukta shiva bhakta is equal to 10 kriya yukta shiva bhaktas. One japa yukta shiva bhakta is equal to 100 tapo yukta shiva bhaktas. One shiva jnana yukta bhakta is equal to a thousand japa yukta shiva bhaktas. And a dhyana yukta shiva bhakta is equal to one lakh shiva jnana yukta shiva bhaktas. A samadhi, uh, samadhista shiva bhakta is equal to one crore dhyana yukta shiva bhakta. So this is the shloda shloka. So kriya yukta tvam, so by the word kriya we mean, so it is vaidika shada shrautas martha karmas. So the Vedika karmas that have been enjoined in the Shrutis and Spiritis. So all the Ved of the Daihika karmas are Smartha karmas. And all the karmas that have been enjoined in the Shrauta Sutra, so starting from Mithyagni Hotram, and all the Yajnas that have been uh, enumerated. So observing them, so those are Shrauta karmas. And here, uh, Ved of the Karmanushtaram, which doesn't involve Kamya karma. So that is the meaning of the word Kriya. So, Kriya Yuktatvam, this Lakshanam was there in Dikshitendra because so he had his, uh, after his uh, Upanayanam, after his uh, marriage, he was engaged in the performance of all the Nityanaimitika Vaidika Karmas. So, Nitya also Nityam Agni Hotram. So, he was a Nitya Agni Hotri as well as an Abhichinna Agni Hotra. Apart from that, he performed all the yagams, so all the seven soma yakna samsthas, seven havira yakna samsthas, the paka yakna samsthas. So all of these he performed meticulously during his lifetime. So this is kriya yuktatvam of uh, the, this lakshanam of Srimad Apaya Dikshitendra is kriya yuktatvam. And then tapo yuktatvam. So the word tapas here refers to adhyayanam, veda adhyayanam. So, Dikshitendra had his Veda Jayanam from his own father, Nityagni Hotri, Vishwajidhyaji, Advaita Vidyacharya Shri Rangaraja Dikshita. After his Upanayanam, his own father taught him Sama Veda along with the six Vedangas. And he also studied the Shrauta Sutram from his own father. So all the Shrauta, uh, prayo, Shrauta Karma Prayogas he studied from his own father. He studied Purva Mimamsa from his father. He studied Vedanta Shastram, Vyakarana Shastram from his father. Before his Upanayanam, he studied uh, Samskrita Sahityam from Guru Ramakavi of Mullandram uh, village. So that is a separate thing. And after his Upanayanam, he had all the uh, Adhyanam from his own father. So there is a famous, so there is a shloka in uh, Brahmanda Puranam which says, so a, uh, a person who gives Brahmopadesham is known as Acharya. And a person who teaches, so it could be one single person or multiple uh, personalities who may teach the Vedas, who may teach the Shastras. So they may be considered as Deshikas. So for Srimad Apayadi Shitendra, both his uh, Acharya as well as his Deshika was his own father, Sri Rangaraja Dvari. And when one and the same person is both the Acharya and Deshika of a person, so he is known as Mahaguru for him. So Dikshitendra's Mahaguru was his own father, Sri Rangaraja Advari. So in that way, Tapo Yuktatvam, this Lakshanam we can see in Dikshitendra. And apart from this, every single day he used to have Veda Dhyanam. So we, we, know, we know the famous instruction of Bhagavad Pada, Vedo Nityam Adhiyatam Taduditam Karma Svanushthiyatam. So Dikshitendra did this all throughout his lifetime. He had been teaching Samaveda to his sons, nephews, grandsons, grand nephews, disciples. So that is how the whole of his life was spent. 
So every day he used to have Veda Dhyayanam. Every day he used to have all the Vaidika Karma Anushtanam, Sanjya Vandanam, Aupasanam, Prata Ragni Hotram, Saya Magni Hotram, and then Vaishwa Devam, Madhyan Hitam, Brahma Yagniyam. So he used to have all, apart from all of these Vaidika Karmas, every day he used to have it, Adhyapanam of Samavedam along with Stradangas, the six Angas. So that was a part of his Nitya daily routine. So six months of Veda Adhyaparam, six months of Veda Anga Adhyaparam. So that is how it used to be in olden days. Apart from Tapo Yuktatvam, the next Lakshanam is Japa Yuktatvam. So Japa Yuktatvam here is Gudhatvena Gurunapal Upadishtam Shivapanchakshara Mantra Japam is Japam. So even here, Dikshitendra had uh, initiation into Shivapanchakshara Mantram and other mantras uh, pertaining to Lord Shiva. And from the Dikshitendra Vijayam, so when we take a look at Dikshitendra Vijayam and uh, Dikshitendra's works like Shivarachana Chandrika, we can appreciate his personality very well. So, uh, Hagiographers like uh, Shivananda Yogindra, so he says that every day Dikshitendra would uh, observe, he used to practice Ashtanga Yogam every day. So, yoga, Ashtanga Yoga Anushtanam was every day practice for him. So, it is not Nitya Agnihotram, so Aupasanam, uh, teaching of the Vedas, teaching of the Shastras, that alone was not there in his uh, everyday routine. Every day he used to meticulously perform asanams, pranayamams. And only then he would do Shivapanchakshara Japam. So even in Shivarachana Chandrika, we'll be seeing now. So it's like Dikshitendra says, before sitting for Shivapanchakshara, one has to perform specific uh, pranayamam, specific asanams, activate the Ida Pingala, Sushumna Nadis, activate the Kundalini Shakti, and then sit for Shivapanchakshara. So that is how Dikshitendra every day he used to do Shivapanchakshara in this way, apart from the elaborate Shiva Puja every day. So this is how the he used to do elaborate uh, an extremely difficult form of uh, Shiva Panchakshara Mantra Japam. So there are uh, many, many different type methods in which Shiva Panchakshara Mantra is uh, chanted. So there was one scholar named Angiras of Venkatesha Sharma. So in one of in, in a compilation which he had written, so he gives a list of uh, 125 different methods with which Shiva Panchakshara uh, uh, Mantra is recited. So there are many innumerable ways uh, no, for chanting it. So in this way, the way Dikshitendra, if we go have a look at the way Dikshitendra has uh, explained uh, Panchakshara Mantra Japam, it will be, no, it's not be, it's nearly possible for people of 21st century to chant it that way. So every day, so uh, there is a very beautiful description given by KV, so Shivananda Yogindra. So, Mula nala nilakala kalana vilantaha nidralu mahyabalikam chalayan hathena. So, through the practice of hatha yoga, he used to awaken the sleeping kundalini shakti that is there within the uh, lying deep within the muladhara chakra. And then he used to activate each of the six chakras, muladhara, swadhisthana, all of the six chakras. The description which uh, Shivananda Yogindra gives, and the description which we see here, you know, they will uh, match with each other. So there will be consistency with uh, the description of uh, Dikshitendra's personality in Dikshitendra Vijayam, and the, uh, what he was, uh, what he has taught in his uh, Shivarchana Chandrika. So it will be like two sides of the same coin. So because today's topic is only on Shivarchana Chandrika, I am not getting into the details of it. So this is how so it's. Uh, Apart from this, this is about Dikshitendra being engaged in uh, Shiva Panchakshara Japam. So, Japa Yuktutvam of Dikshitendra is this. And apart from Japa Yuktutvam, he also had the next Lakshanam, which is Jnana Yuktutvam. So, the word Shiva Siyasha, the word Shiva Padam could be interpreted in two ways. So, it could, it could be the Nirgunam Param Brahma. So, Srimad Apaya Dikshitendra says, uh, so in his uh, Shiva Tattva Vivekam, he gives a very beautiful description of both the Sag Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman. So, he quotes from uh, uh, Shruti Vakyam, Sitihasa Purana, he says, Nirgunam, Nishkriyam, Shantam, Niravadyam, Niranjanam. So, this, these are the Lakshanams of the Supreme Impersonal Brahman that have been revealed in the Upanishads and in the Itihasa Puranas. 
So that same uh, supreme impersonal Brahman, so it also exists in the form of Saguna Brahman. So Tasya Paramashiva Shabdi Tasya Sagunam Rupam. So that Sagunam Rupam, so what kind of Sagunam Rupam? So it is Nila. So Swadhishthita Nirvach, Swani, Swadhishthita Nirvachaniya, Maya Adi Kalpita Gunadi Vibhagam. So the Maya, so it's so the Maya of the Supreme Brahman. So when Ma Brahman is associated with Maya in two forms, we have. So when Maya in the form of Vidya gets associated with Brahman, it, so the, uh, the result is Ishvara. So Maya in, in the form of Avidya, when it gets associated with Brahman, it becomes Jivatma. So, so this Ishvara, so uh, all the Kalpita, all the Nama Rupadi, so all of these. So all of these come to the Brahman when it is associated with Maya. So originally the Nirgunam Brahman is devoid of any names, it is devoid of any forms, it is devoid of attributes. So this Supreme Brahman, when it gets associated with Maya in the form of Vidya, so it becomes uh, Saguna Brahman. And then he says, Nilakanthatva, Virupa, Akshatvadi, so all the different uh, forms of uh, Lord Shiva. And then the different uh, names are Shiva, Bhava, Rudra, Maheshwara, and so on. So all of these uh, forms of Lord Shiva, so they perform many different leelas. So in this way, Saguna Brahman is differentiated in many forms. So Shivasya Jnanam, Shiva Jnanam. So Shivasya means Upava Nyayasya Parasya Brahmanaha. So the supreme impersonal Brahman is Nyayam. So something that could be known through experience. That can be obtained through Sakshatkara. And then the Brahma, the word Shivasya can also be interpreted as Aparasya Sagunasya Brahmanaha. So the, of the Saguna Brahman in the form of Lord Shiva. So Shivasya Jnanam is Shiva Jnanam. So here this Jnanam is Shruti Yukti Janyam Shiva Jnanam. So it is something that is a result of uh, studying the Shrutis and Smritis. So this is something that is uh, that, that is cultivated as a result of studying the Upanishad. So the Upanishad uh, Kandam in the Vedas and studying the Uttarami Mamsa Shastram. So this is uh, Brahmagnanam is of two kinds. So one is Shabdam Brahmagnanam. The other one is Aparokshanu Bhavajanyam Brahmagnanam. So the Shabdam Brahmagnanam is theoretical knowledge of the Brahman. So that is acquired through the study of the Upanishads and the Brahma Sutras. And the same, Aparoksha, this uh, theoretical knowledge, so after this is done, one has to have Aparoksha, so practical experience of it. So otherwise the purpose of Vedanta will not be served. So this Aparoksha Anubhavam Shiva Jnanam takes place through two different ways. So Dhyana Nishtha and Samadhi Nishtha. So it is through the process of Dhyana Nishtha and Samadhi Nishtha, Aparoksha Anubhava Janyam Brahma Jnanam takes place. So the last two Lakshanas, so uh, they pertain to Aparoksha Anubhavam Brahma Jnanam. The, uh, the fourth one pertains to Shabdam Brahma Jnanam. So Dhyanam is, so Dhyanam is the process of meditation. So the process of meditation here is sajatiya pratyaya vritti lakshanam dhyanam. So that is what is dhyanam. So when one particular form is uh, chosen, so it could be one particular form of a particular devata. And when that particular form is being meditated, when that is made into a subject of meditation, constant meditation, so what happens is only then uh, the mind becomes uh, focused on that particular uh, devata rupa. And it is this, the, what is the purpose of this dhyanam? So it is this dhyanam that will destroy all the pratibandhakas or obstacles that are associated with uh, brahma dhyanam. So the brahma dhyanam that is acquired through the theoretical study of Upanishads and Brahma Sutras, so jnanam will also, after obtaining jnanam will always have obstacles. So what, so the the Shabdam Brahmagyana which a person has obtained is not sufficient. So to destroy his avidya, so all the anadya, to destroy the anadya vidya, so the, the, the dhyanam is very, very important. 
so all the pratibandha nivaranam all the uh, is performed so that is uh, the very very uh, important purpose of dhyana so in the bhagavad gita we have the famous shloka shreyo hi gnanam abhyasat gnanat dhyanam vishishyate so gnana dhyanam vishishyate so bhagavan says in bhagavad gita so the same concept has been explained here in vidyeshwara samhita in shiva mahapuranam in different words so shivagnyani vishishto shivagnyani shu lakshyeshu lakshyeshu jnana yukto vishishyate says vidyeshwara samhita of shiva mahapuranam and bhagavad gita says the same thing as jnana dhyanam vishishyate and then so once jnanam uh, so once a person is engaged in jnanam then he shall has to uh, enter into uh, samadhi so in samadhi so samyak adhiyate sab so adhiyate means samyak param brahma adhiyate so with also when the param brahman is perceived in you know within the buddhi just like how a person perceives so the all the external uh, objects through the eyes so when we have a visual presentation around us we are able to see everything that is there uh, in front of us so when i have a lap so when i have the desktop in front of me i have the speaker in front of me i have books in front of me so also everything uh, so this is a visual presentation for my eyes so when i see everything so just like how everything becomes perceptible to my bahya chakshus so in the same way as a pra- so in the as a result of practicing the antarangam of yoga ashtanga yoga so through the practice of dharana dhyana and samadhi so when the param brahman so when that becomes perceptible to the buddhi so that process is known as samadhi samyak adhiyate vishayi bhuyate anena iti samadhi so that is the process of samadhi so the dhyana nishtha dhyana so dhyana yuktatvam and samadhi nishthatvam of dikshitendra so that we can see for example uh, so in dikshitendra vijayam kb subramanya shastri will says that so once his disciples so all of his sons uh, grandsons nephews grand nephews and disciples so they wanted to see what dikshitendra experienced in his state of dhyana and samadhi so big so once dikshitendra went into the state of samadhi and when he opened his eyes so people became uh, paralyzed with fear so what most of them could see was only a tej of punjam so it was only a bright effulgence that you uh, know that was uh, no, they could see and people you know everyone present there what paralyzed with fear and uh, some people could not move they could not speak anything and some people who were you know who had the courage so they they offered namaskarams to him and some people who had the courage some people you uh, know they were able to see the murti of uh, bhagavan nataraja uh, seated here on uh, nataraja seated with vyagrapada on one side and patanjali maharshi on one side so this is one thing which kv subramanya shastri will records and so this is uh, apart from this so during another incident when uh, his disciples uh, inquired him of what he uh, experienced in samadhi avastha so he experienced he, he went into uh, the antarmukha avastha and later on when he came to bahirmukha avastha he was not able to exhibit what he exhibited then so he said so the he experienced so the nirgunam param brahman and then uh, he said tulyatitah triguna rahitah nama rupa adi durah so this was the experience of shrimad apaya dikshitendra during his samadhi at another instant so this is purely an uh, anubhavam of the, so, the supreme impersonal brahman tulyatitah and triguna rahitah rahitah nama rupa adi durah so although dikshitendra said although i may be, i was able to meditate upon the supreme impersonal brahman so what i like the most is to see the murti of swami nataraja so during his last years he was there in chidambaram so the last 10 to 12 years he spent in chidambaram and it was from chidambaram he wrote uh, his magna opera like kalpataru parimalam and nyaya rakshamani so at the last uh, few moments of dikshitendra so when he was taken to the sannidhi of swami nataraja he ch- chanted one and half shloka chidambaram idampuram prachitam eva punyasthalam sutash vinayojvala sukritayash kashitritaha so saying this one and half shloka 
so he merged into the deity of nataraja so a bright effulgence emerged from the murti of nataraja and he emerged into it so just like how andal had sahijya prapti with swami ranganatha so just like how uh, nayanmar uh, nandanar had sahijya prapti into the deity of uh, swami nataraja in chidambaram so in the same way shrimad appaya dikshitendra had sahijya prapti with the deity of swami nataraja in chidambaram so this is the samadhi nishtha of shrimad appaya dikshitendra so this is uh, this is this was the so this is an appreciation of dikshitendra as a shiva bhakta so in his shivarjana chandika so dikshitendra gives many different uh, so there are 38 chapters uh, dikshitendra has uh, discussed upon so as i told you so dantadhavan vidhi snana vidhi shai sankshep shaiva sandhya vidhi vidhanam and then uh, his uh, bhasma dharana vidhi rudraksha dharana vidhi so we take a careful look at it so you know so it is not something that can be easily possible for people in the 21st century so in bhagavatam the 12th canto of bhagavatam while discussing the kali yuga lakshana lakshana says tatashtanu dinam rajan so uh, the every day so dharma satyam shaucham kshamadya so everything will start undergoing decline so this is something we have heard in shrimad bhagavatam so when we take a look at uh, the great mahatmas who lived in different centuries so the people the followers of sanatana dharma in different centuries so we can see a gradual decline of uh, various dharma anushthanam from the time of shrimad appaya dikshitendra and to our times so uh, shivarjana chandrika this presentation is more of a theoretical uh, presentation so a practical so even to practice put it to even to put 5 to 10% of what dikshitendra says into practice so it is something that is very difficult so this is about bhasma dharana vidhi he says and then rudraksha dharana vidhi so this is about so uh, when it comes to panchakshiva panchakshara mantra so he says uh, so the first thing is so it is not mere uh, chanting of the uh, mantra which has pranava followed by the word namas followed by the name of lord shankara in chaturthi vibhakti so the the, uh, the deity of panchakshara panchakshara mantra so she is known as panchakshari vidya so she is none other than uh, devi uma so who is none other than brahma vidya so the deity of uh, panchakshari devi has to be meditated upon and then one has to sit in uh, sukhasanam and then do atmaraksha and once atma raksha is done one of uh, mantra raksha has to be done through specific pranayama procedures and then one has to awaken kundalini shakti before entering into panchakshara japa and then the, he gives two types of counting the japa so one is internal way of counting external way of counting so the internal counting is through alphabets in sanskrit language and he gives a very detailed uh, procedure for internal counting and for external counting he says it has to be done through rudraksha mala and this this rudraksha mala should be separate from the rudraksha mala that is born on the neck on the head and different anga pratyangas of the body so okay, external counting through rudraksha and mala and then the day so there is a deity within the rudraksha mala that has to be invoked and this deity should be invoked using specific mantras and mudras and then he gives rules for positioning the fingers uh, while holding the japa mala and then methods of changing beads of the rudraksha japa mala people who are in pravarti marga should uh, uh, do it downwards people who are in divrti marga the sanyasi should do it upwards and then he also gives a list of offenses that are performed against the rudraksha japa mala for example it should not fall down on the ground so it shouldn't fall on our feet and then it should be high so it has to have separate uh, vastram in which it has to be enclosed so if it the rudraksha mala happens to fall on our own vastram so it happens to fall beyond our nabhi pradesha so it is a very great offense and uh, he gives prayashtitam for each of these offenses so aghora mantra chanted for specific number of avarti so that is the prayashtitam for it and then there is a, he says that a uh, flower should be held in the hand uh, during the japa kala and then he gives rules for positioning the legs while sitting in sukhasanam and then chanting of mantra shlokas to invoke the rudraksha japa mala so all of this uh, so this is all uh, and then uh, one has to enter into the chanting of uh, rudraksha uh, panchakshara mantra 
so with this i would like to conclude and i would like to conclude with uh, verses from uh, vidyeshwara samhita so the next shlokas of vidyeshwara samhita so it says uttarottara vaishishtyat poojayam uttarottaram halam vaishishtya roopam cha durvigneyam maneshibhi tasmad vai shiva bhaktasya mahatmyam vetiko narah shivashaktiyo poojanam cha shiva bhaktasya poojanam kurute yonaro bhaktya sa shiva shiva medhate so uttarottara vaishishtyat so from uh, starting from uh, kriya yukta shiva bhakta to samadhi yukta shiva bhakta so each one is superior uh, in the uh, sequential order so in this way so the there is a puja phalam for worshiping the shiva bhaktas and the, the greatness of such shiva bhaktas is something that is extremely difficult to understand so tasmad vai shiva bhaktasya mahatmyam vetiko na so so therefore a person who understands and appreciates the greatness of a shiva bhakta and shiva shakti of pooja namcha so when he engages in the worship of shiva and shakti and when he engages in the worship of the shiva bhakta so our uh, saha shivam edhate so he ultimately attains shiva so with this i would like to conclude shrimad apayay dikshitendra param brahmane namaha thank you very much uh, dr gokul krishna ji uh, for uh, for highlighting the shiva bhakti aspect but in a more personal sense in the sense of uh, in the ritualistic sense in a sadhana perspective uh, i think even uh, this is this is this is one dimension i think most may be not be aware of i mean people would have heard of apayadikshita as a great advaita uh, vidwan as a great uh, shivadvaita vidwan as a great uh, uh, scholar of many writings but uh, seeing this uh, the, the details about uh, how to cha- do this panchakshare mantra japa and all the prashtita details it's uh, simply amazing wonderful uh, thank you for doing this uh, session uh, dr gokul thank you very much thank you for